You know, I was going to write a quick outline for this, and I forgot to do that. Um, so we're just going to go at it. Okay, so we have the Wusthof Classic Icon Cook's Knife. Do they still call it a Cook's Knife? They changed it to Chef's Knife. Oh, they call it a Chef's Knife now. That's cool. They used to call it a Cook's Knife. Um, yeah, the Wusthof Icon 8-inch Chef's Knife. This is the first knife I ever bought. The first good knife. Um, so I have three years with this guy, roughly. I like this knife. We'll say that right off the bat. <clears throat> this knife actually has a very special spot in my heart because it was the first knife that I ever bought. First thing I wanna do, um, there is no unboxing for this one. I'm gonna put that out because I don't have the box anymore. So without an unboxing, uh, we can go straight to the other thing that I like doing with these knives is a website review. So if we go to Wusthof's website, Classic Icon knives feature a distinct double bolster design for professional style, heft, beauty, and balance. Double bolster? What, what do you mean? What does that mean, double bolster? Never heard that term before. The handle is made from a highly synthetic or highly durable synthetic material called oh, um, polyoxymethylene. Is that what you yell when you're done counting down hide and seek? The forge blade made from high carbon stainless steel. The steel is X50. It doesn't say that on this page, I don't think, which bugs me. We have <clears throat> exceptionally sharp laser controlled precision sharpening for knives that are exceptionally sharp and stay sharp for longer. It's a knife, it's supposed to be sharp. Stop advertising that. You know how I feel about it. Double bolster. You still don't know what that means. Is that like the bolster's thicker? Ergonomic handles, sleek, elegant, ergonomic black handles made of highly durable synthetic material, polyoxymethylene, which has a tighter molecular structure to resist fading and discoloration. Tighter than what? You're using a comparative word, but you're not comparing it to anything. Yes, yeah, so, you know, like anything else, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tear this away, tear this apart, because I hate all the marketing bullshit that not, language that knives use. Um, <clears throat> I love this knife, but that's not gonna stop me from you know, completely shredding anything I can find about it. Because I think it's important to be able to point out the bullshit. Comforted style, classic icon knives feature sleek contoured black handles fitted with a double bolster, the thicker junction between the handle and the knife blade. Okay, yeah, so it's just a th thicker bolster, okay. Good for chopping and cutting. That is a knife, it is a chef's knife. I would hope that it's good for chopping and cutting. Fish, fruit, herbs, meat. Also, you know, just about everything else because again, it's a chef's knife. Highlights, forged, good. I like forged, we don't like stamped. The half bolster, the junction between the handle and the blade reduces the weight of the knife, making it easier to handle. What, you just said it was a double bolster and now it's a half bolster? What? Get your shit together. Forged, Rockwell Hardness 58 HRC. There's the length, the width, chef's knife, what it's good for. I hate saying what it's good for, it's a chef's knife. It's good for just about everything. Um, head of lettuce, that is a weird cabbage, fish, fruit, head of lettuce, herbs, meat. That, that, those are weird specifications. There is something egregious missing from these specifications. Who's paying attention? Who can tell me what's missing right here? What incredibly important piece of information do we as knife shoppers need to know about the knife steel yep steel type they are not telling us the steel type now i think that wustoff uses the same steel in just about all their knives so it might just be somewhere else on the site but it should be on the product page point being they're not telling us the steel type now I already know the steel type, I'll tell you. Um, it's X50, X50 CRMOV 15 steel. Um, standard German steel, not a bad steel, not a great steel, just kind of a, you know, middle of the road, 
Um, it's a tough steel, but it's not my favorite. Um, and you can find the steel in way cheaper knives than this. Uh, one other thing, $200. This knife is $200. So, now are we getting $200 worth of knife? Well, you know, I also, I also wanna look at the Amazon page to see if there's any, cause I initially bought this off Amazon, I think. Um, and what's crazy is when I bought this knife, it was 180 bucks. So it's gone up in price over the last couple of years. And also, if you'll notice, mine, mine is a grant netch. It's got the scalloped blade right here. It doesn't look like they're selling that anymore. Um, which is fine. But I, I like the look of the Grant Edge. That's why I got it. The Grant Edge supposedly helps with food release. It does a little bit. Um, so let's see here. Kitchen workhorse, essential for prepping any meal. Um, and that's right. This knife in particular is essential for prepping any meal. You actually can't cook if you don't own this knife. Classic Icon series features a sleek and sophisticated black handle with a double bolster for exceptional balance, beauty, blah, blah, blah. Chef's knife, this thing's a double bolster. Is it a half bolster or a double bolster? Come on, guys. Aiden Chef Knife is forged from a single block of high carbon stainless steel and tempered to 58 degree HRC. 58 degree HRC? No, just 58 HRC. Who wrote that? Listoff. Listoff, come on. Get it together. The Pre Precision Edge Technology, PTAC, yields a blade that is 20% sharper with twice the edge retention than previous models. That sounds like bullshit compared to the standard manual sharpening process. The P-Tech technique makes an extremely thin cutting edge for superior sharpness. It also creates a cutting edge that has a high initial cutting performance. Before sharpening, the blades are measured using lasers. Then computers calculate the precise sharpening angle for each knife. As soon as the measurements have been made, precision robots are used to sharpen the blades on a whetstone. If anybody, if anybody knows anything more about this, not just you guys in chat, but once I post this video, um, if anybody knows anything more about this and wants to tell me this isn't bullshit, I'm all ears. I'm all ears. But this all sounds like bullshit to me. This just sounds like they figured out how to sharpen their knives with the robots and they're putting a nice little sticker on it to make it look all new, nice, and shiny. Let's actually take a closer look at this guy. So, got our 8-inch chef's knife. Got our grant edge right here, the scallop blade. And we've got this long wonky looking handle. Now, part of the reason I actually bought this knife was because of the handle and just like the overall aesthetic of the knife. Um, again, this was my very first knife. So, um, I, I hunted for knives for a while and uh, this one I found, I actually went down to a um, store that sells cutlery. I held it and like it was one of those things as soon as I held it, it's like that scene in the first Harry Potter movie where he holds his wand and his hair blows back. It's kind of like that. Also, f turfs. So we've got our distal taper going down the blade. So it thins out towards the tip, which is always nice. And this handle right here, it's pretty comfortable to hold. It's quite comfortable to hold. Um, however, it's not very much not perfectly balanced. It's pretty handle heavy. It actually balances right about the third rivet of the handle or the first rivet, depending on which way you're going, right here. But this rivet is pretty much the balance point. Um, so it is handle heavy. This handle I've discovered over years of use, when you're cutting, especially if you start to like arc your wrist down a little bit, because the handle is so long, it'll start pushing into your arm and it can get kind of in the way. One of my pet peeves, I actually forgot to mention this on the last knife review, but the spine is not rounded. And now, guys, I've made a knife. I've made two knives. That doesn't make me a knife making expert by any means. But I've made two knives 
and I have rounded the spines on both of them. Having experienced exactly how insanely easy rounding the spine is on a knife, um, I don't think that there's any excuse for major knife makers to not round the spines. It's so easy. It takes so little time to round the spine on a blade and it makes it infinitely more comfortable. But, well, you know, we've talked about it. What about the performance? Well, this is the part where I'm going to shoehorn in the final edit um, a bunch of random footage of me cutting vegetables with it because I've meal prep stir fry for the week. So that's what you're going to see is vegetables getting cut. Um, it performs pretty well. It's very comfortable, even with it being handle heavy. Um, it still feels really good to hold overall. Um, again, the handle can get in the way a little bit. And then if you're working with some stuff that you have to use like a little bit more force on, again, this spine, you can, you can start to feel it kind of dig into your hand. But I mean, it performs really well. It cuts really nicely. Uh, the X50 steel is a softer steel, which means that the edge retention on it isn't great. Um, I did find myself having to sharpen this with daily use every like month or so. And I probably could have sharpened it even more frequently, but it was just a matter of actually like not being lazy and doing it. <clears throat> so, you know, the edge retention could be better. I'm just gonna waste some more time here while you look at the vegetables being cut like broccoli and bell pepper and onion and what's that, garlic? I don't know. I haven't actually filmed this footage yet. <laughs> Um, I'm gonna film it tomorrow, probably, maybe. I was gonna do it today, but I didn't. Yeah, that's pretty cool, guys. So, I mean, the ultimate question, though, is it worth it? Is it worth $200? Well, I mean, it's an exceptionally good knife. As much as I, like, you know, found my issues with it, I still like this knife. I'm still partial to it because it was my first knife. $200 is a big ask for this. You can get some decent quality Japanese steel for $200. With $200, you know, like any long established popular brands, you're paying for the name. You're paying for the trust in a long established company that has a good track record of making quality knives. You know, I think peace of mind is worth it. Is it worth that much? That's on you. For my money, and I've mentioned these guys a million times on the channel before, um, they they are a bit of a sponsor for the channel and i i'm fully you know aware of that i'm disclosing that but i continue to have them sponsor me because i like the knives because i like recommending them i don't just recommend them in hopes of getting sales but my con this thing's 140 bucks con knives and i think it outperforms the worst off it's more comfortable to hold for me <clears throat> it's better balanced. It's a better steel type, so it has better edge retention. I think that really, on every front, outperforms the Wolstoff. Um, and it's only 140 bucks. And yeah, here's the sponsorship part. Code Launchpad at checkout gets you $5 off the knife. So, by all means, if you want a Wolstoff, if you want a good German knife, this is not a bad knife to buy by any means. I just think it's fairly overpriced for what it is because of the name and there are knives I'd rather be using. Patreon homies, shout out to all you guys helping me pay my bills every month. Uh, make sure you give this video a like, maybe subscribe even if you like the video. Uh, leave a comment down below. Guys, what are we commenting down below? If you like the knife, what you want me to do next, something stupid, I don't know what we're doing. I didn't plan this. I didn't write anything down for this video. Just leave a comment. Say anything you feel. Tell me how your day is going. Um, that's about it for the video. Love y'all. I'll see you soon.